I'm live right now. Mm. Okay, we're live. Okay. You're going to make it public so everyone can see it. Hold on. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Do I put it on airplane mode? No. Okay. What they see, this is this is part of the problem with your social media stuff. Now, if you're on airplane mode, how are you supposed to be online? I don't know. I've never done this before. Oh, it's not the first time I've heard you say that. It's just been thirty something years. Oh. <laughs> All right, hold on. We'll give people a few minutes to log in. <laughs> Crack yourself up, huh? I'm going to try so hard. To do to what? Be... I don't know. I don't know, my friend. Hold on one second. I'm just getting set up here. I don't understand why we couldn't be on together. See, like someone's dinging in right now. That's what I meant. What do you mean dinging in? <laughs> like I'm getting a text message. Well, <laughs> You should have put on do not disturb, maybe. Well, that's what I was asking. You're not being a very good live trainer here. So I was asking, what else do I need to do? Oh, well, just, it's too late. Too late now. Don't worry about it. Just forget it there. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, man, there's a lot of people on here. How can you tell? I don't see anyone. It, it says up in the thing, 60-something people so far logging. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Kim. What's up, Kim? Kim Kim Gasco's on. I can't say her new last name. <laughs> Kathleen. Hey Robin. Hi, Kim. Okay. All right. Okay, there's actually a lot. Okay, there's a lot of people signing on. So no pressure on you. No so, pressure. like terrifying. I'm glad I don't see who's on here. I don't see anyone on my end. I well, you can. Face. You can. There's something. Look on your screen. There's something you could hit so you could see the messages and questions. See if you see something there. It's on there. Okay. I don't see it. Okay. It's you, you got to work with me here. There's something there you could hit so you could see who's commenting and stuff. Okay. okay. There's a lot of people on. I just want for any wives on this call right now, the, the instruction, the lack of instruction from you, like a husband, there's something on your screen. You got to hit it so you could see it. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Just be specific. Look, I don't know. Look something. <laughs> look. Look on your screen. There has to be something you could hit to see the messages. Okay. 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 And if for some reason I lose you, just go back into the link, click in, and I'll bring you on. All right. Okay. Got it. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Leslie. Ryan. Ron. Anna, you got, okay, you got a lot of people on, lady. A lot of people. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll get started, guys. I okay. guess we'll get started. Um, <laughs> hey, <Brad. laughs> Hello, I Al. have to read it because I can't see both. I can't see you and the chat, like whatever's in the comments at the same time for some reason. So you just have to read it to me. Okay. Do you see any icon or anything you can hit mm -hmm. on your I do, but when I hit chat, it'll show me like all of the chats, but then I don't see your face. So I don't know if you see mine. Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. Okay. Hey, Bill, what's up, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Hello, Sean. All right. Let's get started. I have okay. a very special, very special <laughs> guest tonight. She's got the professional lighting going on. She's so uncomfortable right I'm now. So, this is terrifying. I <laughs> Not enjoying this at all. Now, listen. Hey, Tim, how are you, buddy? All right, listen, guys. Here's the thing. If you look behind my wife, just to the left, you see a little part of where all the magic happens. Okay? The Zyrac or the Peloton bike? The Peloton bike, you mean? No. That magic? The bed. <laughs> bed. <laughs> you mean my workouts? Got it. <laughs> your face, your face, is, I know how when you get embarrassed. Like you're smiling so big because you're so uncomfortable right now. I okay. am uncomfortable. You don't have to keep pointing it out. Okay. That's why we're doing this today. That's why I didn't tell you what we were talking about. Because honestly, I had nothing planned to, okay. to, to talk about. 
And Kim said, just go in the other room and fix it. I don't know how to do it either, Kim. I've never been on that end. You don't want me messing on anything on here, you know? Um, but okay, so all, all seriousness aside, all right? Um, the things I wanted to talk about, and there's a lot of people on here, especially for the ladies, right? So, you know, I work with a lot of women in the dog industry, a lot of clients, a lot of trainers, probably 80% of the people I work with are women. Um, you happen to be a woman. Right? Very good. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh huh. But over the years, so many people say little things to me about you. Okay, good things in a positive way, okay. but very often putting themselves down, the ladies especially, mostly. And men usually won't be that honest, right? But women are a little more honest with their, their feelings and their emotions. And, and you know, I've um, I spent a lot of time talking to a lot of people. And I put everything out there so people know my family. They know you. They know the kids. But they don't really know you. So all is, all they see is you keeping me in line, keeping me in check. And they'll see some half-naked pictures of you every now and then with the fitness stuff. Right? That's, that's, that's about it. By the way, guys, my wife's trying to get on the cover of Muscle and Fitness for, um, well, she's about to be 50 years old. So thank you for everyone who keeps going on there and voting. Yes. It's not like her. I'm not sure so why she wants to win this so bad. I'm not sure, but I'm just trying to help her out there. So thanks for everyone who goes on there. And, uh, 50. It's a big deal. I feel like doing something like, you know, big. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. well, you got this right here. We'll take yeah, care of that later. Terrifying. I know. Checklist. Okay. <laughs> doing something big. See you right there to your right a little later. Anyway. <laughs> Crack yourself up. Okay. All right. So, so where, where was I going here? But they don't really see um, everything that's gotten to this point, right? So right now we're in a very good place. Uh, we're very blessed. We're very lucky. We, we have a good life. Um, we're not these people who go online and post stuff and seem happy and then are miserable unless you cry behind closed doors when I'm not around, you know? <laughs> But uh, Kim says you deserve the cover. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, um, Kim. But I want people to know, especially the women out there, especially the women, especially the women that are struggling in any way, right? And especially because of the past year, and I see so many people hurt. I want them to know a little more about where you got here today and all the work that has gone into it because people don't see that. OK, um, they never got to see me and you sitting in my car looking for change under the seat so I can get an order of fries with the Whopper at Burger King. Right. We had nothing. Zippo. And and, you know, most of you know that are on here. But for those who don't, we've been together for 31 years since high school. OK, so we started dating as seniors in high school. We couldn't have been more opposite from each other. I think we still are. In many ways, but yeah. our ideals and everything are exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. We are completely opposite personality wise. Thank God. This, <laughs> I think that's why it works. Um, so the way it started, guys, is Stephanie was a good kid. I was not. Okay. We met in the vice principal's office because when she had free class time, she worked in the vice principal's office. I happened to be in there a lot. And that's how we got together. The vice principal and many teachers kind of pushed us together because I think they were praying that I wind up with her and change. And it worked. It worked. OK, it worked. But I want to go through a little of your history because people see the fitness they see a little bit of the business, but I want to expand on that for, for their sake and your sake, because you don't put yourself out there and you're you're working yourself to the bone 
and it has to stop. Aww. Gotta stop. Okay. So have the kids ever told you before they want you to quit your job? Yeah. Um, several times a day sometimes. I mean now with this job, yeah. but they've never told you that before. Okay. Right. I tell you quit your job because the amount of hours you put in is ridiculous. You make good money. You've always done well in the corporate world, but there comes a time where it's like, holy shit, you got to live a little bit. Okay. Um, but I think a lot of people are going through the same thing because they're scared. They're scared to do what they want and go on their own, you know? So I work with a lot of women in the dog world that take on business and take on clients and take on dogs that they should not. Yeah. They should not because it's a liability. It's a no win situation, but it's how they feed their family. So they're stuck in a position where they have no choice and that makes it very tough. And so for me, when I give people advice and, and you see it, you see the amount of messages and calls and everything that come on. Sometimes I think people think I'm making that up. You know what I mean? No, but when I, lot. when I answer people with that, I always also tell them I'm in a different situation. I'm not an idiot. It's not fair for me to tell someone, turn down that client, turn down that work, because I don't, I'm in a position where I can. Most people aren't in that position. Okay. You're in a position where you shouldn't be working 15, 16, 17 hours a day. Okay. So that, that's getting a little crazy. So let's go back to the beginning. Tell people your mom and dad, right? Came to this country from Peru, what, in the 60s, late 60s, right before you were born? Yeah, right before that. You're going to make me cry. That's emotional. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, if you're a child of immigrant parents, I think that work ethic is instilled in you. You watch your parents come to another country, try and uh, live the American dream. They, I've watched them work two, three jobs at a time and, and really make something of themselves and then lay a solid foundation for their kids to make it. And so I think as a young age, at a young age, that was instilled in both my sister and I. Uh, we don't know any different. And I feel like you're the same way, Larry. A lot of people are. I think um, where we struggle with it, like today's a very different climate. Like there's more entrepreneurs today than I ever remember hearing the word growing up. There's so many more opportunities, even with social media. There's so, so much you can do through e-commerce. There's so many different ways you can connect with people internationally and you can grow your business that way. Um, so I think there's probably ways to work smarter. But yeah, I mean, I watched my parents you know, work so hard and they instilled those core values in me. And so I feel like I don't know how to do anything different. And it does get to a point as a woman, as a mom, as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter, you just kind of burn out. Um, especially if you're hardwired, you know, you and I are both hardwired the same way where we're like zero to 60, like that's it. We're more balls to the wall or we don't do it. Um, yes. and, and so we've both hard. been, and we've both been working since we were kids. Yeah. Like I've yeah. never not worked since I was a very young kid. You were working in the corporate world. Thanks to your mom at what? 15. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you've really never had a break. You've taken time off when the kids were born and, but that's about it. And so you, you think at this stage of the game, you'd be working a little bit less. You're working more than ever now, more than ever by far, right? I think, you touched, I think you touched on it before when you were saying, talking about female trainers and how you feel. I think all trainers, regardless of gender, all trainers, all entrepreneurs, you're going to just feel like you've got to grind because, you know, you're, you're it. You know, you're you're the whole reason you're going to eat one week to the next or you're going to invest in the future or leave a legacy. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of pressure, I think, on on people in general who want to run a business to do that. I think it's hard. It's really difficult. And I've told you this a, uh, for a long time. I think you definitely have angels <laughs> for anyone on this on this who has known you as a child. You have a lot of guardian angels looking out for you. But I do think your career has been beautiful to watch as your spouse because it's been um, intentional. And I think life's circumstances forced you to slow down and gradually build up. And it allowed you to really appreciate 
quality over quantity um, and grow. You've been doing this forever. It's not just overnight. So you've been able to really grow, make mistakes, learn from them, and just grow at a pace where you can really manage it. Um, and you were forced to do that because you have a whole nother job. You know, you have a family. So I think for a lot of people, it's good for them to understand that there is wisdom in learning how to pace yourself because the burnout is big. Um, and when you burn out, you'll crash. You know, it's not it's not an easy thing to endure and come back from. Yeah, but now like let's let's put it back on on you here, right? Mm -hmm. So you've watched your your parents are both both very hardworking people. Like yeah. they 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 like really put a lot of effort into work, but you see how fast the years go and then it's all gone. Yeah. And I'm hoping you start to realize there's so much more than than work. You know, um, I just retired after 25 years. The the business is whatever we want it to be. We're, we're so blessed there. We could write our own ticket. Um, but it shouldn't only be me reaping the benefits and laying in the pool all day long. You know, there's a lot of women in this neighborhood that know I'm very vulnerable right now. When I'm when I'm out there glistening in that pool, all tan with the sun kissing my body, you cannot be off to work. You have to be here. That's how that movies name. start. That's how movies <laughs> start. There is no shame in your game. If any of our neighbors are on here, I'm sorry. You are literally shirtless all the time, getting the mail, walking the dog, and Listen, usually some sort of it's, weapon it's, on you. It's active training. I train dogs in the summertime with nothing but a very small pair of shorts on because while I'm training dogs, I want to keep my tan going. And so, yes, I'm not going to wear <laughs> much clothing when I'm training. There's no shoes. There's no socks. There's no shirt. There's very little clothing there. OK, um, but again, I want to go back and give people a history. What they don't understand, the sacrifice we made. For one, if it wasn't for you, and I've talked about this, but I never tell you personally, we all know the truth. If it wasn't for you, there's no way I ever become a federal agent. I don't have the business because I'd probably be dead or locked up a long time ago. We both know that. Some of the people on here that we grew up with, they understand what I'm talking about. I was completely opposite as federal agent material. The only reason I changed that was because we had gotten together and I just knew, I knew right away I was, I was going to marry you. I, I just did, you know? And when you didn't give me sexy time right away, I knew I had to marry you. I had to, I had no choice. <laughs> like, like I spent, I'm not a prom kind of guy. I spent all that money, put on a tux, got in the wrong damn limo for you, thinking good things were going to happen, and nothing. So I knew I had to wait and marry it just to see what, you know, everything was going on there. Um, but all, all kidding aside, we started with nothing. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is when we were engaged, I up and left to go off to the academy for the Border Patrol. And not only the academy for six months, but then went and moved out west to start the career while we were saving up for the, <laughs> saving up for the wedding. Here's the thing, guys. I'm just going to tell you before she does. I can't see it. Stephanie was working. I was working. We were supposed to be saving for our wedding. I was already living out west. She was still living back home because we we didn't do things like that. Her parents weren't going to have us together until we were married. We were both supposed to be saving up money for the wedding. I like to have a good time. I kind of partied a little bit when I was out there. I was only able to send one check home in a whole year and it bounced <laughs> for the wedding. So yeah, Stephanie, check is supposed to go to the wedding. Yeah, it's horrible. Stephanie, Stephanie paid for our wedding. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> but I had so much fun. It was a good time, right? So we did. We were apart over a year, completely apart until we came home for the wedding. And then we got married. And we started off with nothing. And so when we went on our honeymoon, we went to Cancun. It was a real honeymoon yeah. because we had never really spent any time. Her parents are very old school, very strict. And I'm grateful for it now, but I hated it back then. So literally the first time we ever spent time together away and overnight was our honeymoon. It was, that was it. And so Cancun was awesome. 
Now, when we got back to Arizona, after we got married, we partied like rock stars. We partied like, like everybody wanted to hang with us because we partied nonstop. We were in Vegas. I didn't have a curfew. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like when it's you go to college, you're like, what? There's no curfew it's and I'll true. be home. Yep. It's true. But again, what I want people to understand, especially the ladies that are having a little hard time now, you sacrificed everything. So Stephanie was a pre-med student at Fordham University. Hi, Renz. And she sacrificed everything to up and move across the country with me and had to start over out there, you know, out West, you don't have access to everything like you do in New York and New Jersey. And it was terrible. I felt awful watching her try to find a job. <laughs> it was hard, you know, and I'll never forget. You got turned down as a backup baker. <laughs> I didn't get turned down. I didn't apply. That's the only job offer I got. And I, I turned it down. <laughs> a backup baker. So it, it was, it was tough and, and good thing, uh, in the midst of that, I was working a lot and it sucked. And then one day I get a call from my brother from a payphone in Daytona beach. He was at a payphone and he was kind of running from the bookies in Jersey. He had, he owed a lot of money and he came to live with us. I sent him a bus ticket and that was our family, the three of us for, for a while. And, um, you know, we had nothing like we we really struggled. I'll never forget. I don't know if you remember going to Best Buy and I applied for financing for a stereo and got turned down. <laughs> I don't even remember that. It oh was devastating. Yeah, we had no credit, had no, nothing. Nothing, no nothing. money. And that's where the dog stuff started, too, with Ben, our first dog. That's where it all began all around the same time, you know, and then. After a couple of years out there, I loved it out there. The work was great. But after the first couple of years, I knew, you know, it, we, I, we couldn't have kids out there. It was just too bad. Like being on the Mexican border, people have no idea what it's like. No idea. So when you folks get upset, when I chime in, when I see people say dumb things, my wife is a very liberal person. She understands. She knows because she was there too. You know what I mean? And then in 1999, I got the opportunity to come to Kentucky and people are like, are you out of your mind? What are you going to do in Kentucky? And I think you might have been the first brown person in the state of Kentucky. I don't know. That's what it seemed like back then. I don't and think the first one, <laughs> but I do. it was definitely a culture shock for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm set. Well, we're set. I mean, we do everything together, but you're starting all over looking for a job after you just excelled at your career out in Arizona, you got hired in the corporate world there. And like you always did, you took off, you took off. People notice it in the corporate world very quick. And for you people who say, yeah, it's because of what she looks like. She worked for women. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she worked for women, not men. That? <laughs> yeah. That's how men think. Trust me. That's what a lot of them are thinking. And I had to pull you away from that, right? Oh, wait, little side note to that, guys. Stephanie worked for a medical company in Arizona, and she started at, at the bottom. Actually, her first day of work was the most upset I'd ever seen her. And that's the day I got our first puppy. I got Ben. She, yeah. she didn't know it. She started this job. And at like eight o'clock at night, she still wasn't home. And I'm calling her at her new office and she's like crying on the phone. It was a nightmare. And when she finally got home late at night, she's walking up the stairs. We lived on this and she's hysterical crying. It was the day from hell. And there I am holding this puppy. And she looks and she grabbed the puppy and the puppy started licking her tears. And that's how our whole dog journey started right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But she worked for a woman. The CEO of her company there was oh, called... Yeah. They nicknamed her the Ice Queen. She Not was me. very, Not she me. was oh, very okay. serious, and everyone was scared of her. Right? Yeah. So one day, me and Stephanie go into a diner for breakfast out there, and we walk in, and her CEO, this lady, is sitting there with her husband having breakfast, 
And Stephanie gets all nervous. She goes, oh, no, my boss is here. I'm like, what's the big deal? She's like, oh, I don't want to see. No, like she's so uncomfortable. So we have to walk past them to go get seated. And we stop and it's uncomfortable. And Stephanie says, hi, guys, this is my husband, Larry. And, you know, and they say hi. And it's all tense. And all of a sudden, this waiter comes up behind me. He taps me on the shoulder and he whispers in my ear, sir, please look down at your pant leg. And I look down, and when I look down, they all look down, and I had a pair of purple underwear sticking out the bottom of my pants. And I panicked. And you ran. And, you ran and I just and ran out of the diner. You left me and, there. Yeah. And her boss and her husband lost it. They were, his, they were like bent over screaming. And because of that incident, they invited us to their Christmas party that day, right? <laughs> yes. And we became really close after that. But it yes. was horrifying. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, and the whole restaurant knew. All the wait, the wait staff was laughing and making bets on how long it would take you to notice. So you just kept yep. talking. Yes. Yep. And then we're getting ready to go to this party, and I used to really like to have a good time. Okay. And my wife is warning. She's giving me all the warnings. She's laying down the ground rules. And there was an elderly doctor that was going to be there. He was very elderly, and again, nobody talked to him. Everyone was scared of him. And he was a urologist. She warned me and threatened me. No penis jokes. I warn you, no penis. I said, I'm not going to do anything. We were there probably 10 minutes. And me and this old man became best buds. And the penis joke, the penis jokes were flying. And I could see my wife watching me from across the room, like shooting daggers at me. You know, and that's that's how everything started. We had a really good time out there. It was the best experience. So then we got back to Bowling Green. It was the same thing. She had to start all over again, but she blew up. She started at like, what, like $8 an hour? Like I don't the, even know. Yeah. Just a, a bottom position and blew up. And next thing you knew, when they were having their big corporate parties up in St. Louis, we were always at the head table and we became friends with everyone because of her work ethic. That's what I'm trying to get here. She's a workhorse. She's an absolute workhorse. Like she'll outwork anybody I know. Aww, now you. let's get to the fitness because oh, this, okay. this is where the ladies always have questions, right? Okay. First of all, when we were young, one of the times where I knew I was going to marry her is we were at her house and we were ordering Chinese food. <laughs> How do you remember and, all this stuff? And and Stephanie <laughs> Stephanie said Stephanie said she ordered a quart, you know, the big containers of lo mein and a mm. big container, like family size container of fried rice. So she said to me, she said, What do you want? I said, No, that's good. That's good for me too. She goes, Oh no, no, this is for me. What are you gonna eat? <laughs> and she was dead serious. I was so turned on at that moment. I knew, <laughs> I knew I wasn't going anywhere. It was great, right? But back then, she didn't really work out. She did like Jane Fonda tapes and like everybody and did. Jane Fonda was a legend. She's a legend. She pioneered yeah. a whole lot of stuff that people yeah. are still doing today. Yeah. She did all the silly aerobic stuff that was useless and she ate terribly. Like, you know, she used to live on like chocolate pudding and saltine crackers and white rice. That's that's what her and diet. Fat free stuff. Do you remember the like the yes. whole fat free craze? Yes. Yes. I remember yeah, that. but she, but she was she was thicker than shit, and oh. she looked good. She was <laughs> thick. she was thick. I love it. She was so damn thick, right? So when we got to Arizona, I started taking her to the gym, and I'll never. I was just telling Renzo this the other day. We'd get to the gym, and she'd follow me around like a puppy, scared to death to be in there. Right. Just scared to death, Funny. not knowing what to do. And you didn't do anything athletically growing up. You didn't play sports. You didn't do none of that stuff. And if you remember, we were sitting in our first house in Kentucky in Franklin, and there was a commercial for a 5K down in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And you said something about running and I challenged you to do it. And she didn't run. She didn't do any of that stuff. She's like, I can't do that. You know, and uh yeah, that is a rack of Zaya stuff there, Annette. Oh, yes, Annette, it is. There's so much more, too. Yes. And so, and so you did that 5K, and you kind of got hooked. 
and then you started running them. And once you did the Nashville half marathon, you were on cloud nine. And I said to you, well, you're halfway there. You might as well do a full marathon. And you were like, are you out of your mind? I said, you have to do it once in your life or you're going to regret it. And so this girl went from never running, doing nothing. She took that challenge and she did. She ran the Chicago marathon, which was, which was pretty, uh, pretty incredible. But the fitness shows, what a lot of you ladies have to understand, she's a very shy person, like a very, very shy person, right? Being in a little bikini and high heels on stage is not uh, her. Never thought I would do it. No. Yes. So she always used to talk about like having this fantasy of loving to get out there and compete, but she'd never be able to do it like it haunted her. And she got more and more into working out. You know, she's always been in great shape. She always looked good. And then one year for Christmas, I sent her, I bought her a package to go work with uh, former Miss Fitness Olympia, uh, Jen Hendershot. So I sent her out there for a long weekend. And it was like the best gift ever for her. And she just trained all weekend. And, and Jen convinced her you should compete. And so Stephanie had done one show. Her first show was a small show in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah. She was about to turn 40 and Renzo had just been born seven months prior. Mm -hmm. So she just given birth to our second child to Renzo and she did her first show. And it was, it was awesome. The, you know, Sophia was there screaming and cheering for her and she looked great. She did really good. And then Jen told her the Arnold classic is coming up. I think you should do the Arnold. And she was like, are you out of your mind? It's like one of the biggest shows in the world. I can't do that. And, and Jen convinced her that she could. And so she signed up to compete at the Arnold. And I went up there with her. My mom stayed with the kids. And that's a spectacle for anyone who's oh gosh, never been to the Arnold. It's <laughs> huge, right? Huge. Yeah. So now you have my 40-year-old wife at one of the biggest shows in the world. And I'm literally sick to my stomach. Like I'm so nervous for her while she's on stage, but I'm watching her compete with her fitness idol right next to me, cheering around with me, Monica Brandt. I was with Monica Brandt on my left and Anderson Silva, the MMA like legend on my right. And they were both cheering for her like crazy because I was just like losing my mind. And uh, she wound up taking third yeah. internationally competing against women half her age that never had a baby or a carb. Okay. That was like the best thing <laughs> in the world. Right. I think, um, not that you're asking me any questions, but, um, the one moment I remember sharing with you, like when I chose to do it. So my girlfriend, Robin is the one who was doing it and kind of got inspired from her. And then, um, didn't know if I could do it. And then, yeah, to go into fat camp with Jen was amazing, met some amazing friends. So if anyone ever wants to do it, completely encourage you to do it because I started, I mean, my first one, I was 39. Um, yeah. And I remember it was right before my birthday or it was right on my birthday. And I was turning 39 on stage, my very first show. Renzo was seven months and I was backstage and I'd met this girl and we still keep in touch from time to time on social media. And she was like, oh, it's my birthday. I'm like, no way, it's my birthday too. And she was like, birthday twinsies. I'm like, yeah, I was like, how old are you going to be? She's like, 21. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? Uh, I was like, I'm old enough to be your mother. Yay. Um, and I remember thinking, what the heck am I doing? Um, and I think I black, I completely like blacked out walking on stage. Like I, I don't remember it. So people tell yeah, you, you. You wouldn't get off. They were trying to move you along and you were still. <laughs> I blacked out. I just kept practicing my routine like this you do this in dog training and any kind of training right it's all about consistency right and practice and that's all i kept doing and practice 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 and i knew when i got up there i'd be so nervous that i just wanted my body to remember what to do um, and i blacked out but i remember feeling so exhilarated thinking i the discipline it requires to compete not just to work out because i really feel like anybody can work out I, I really do, especially if you know you're going to be judged and half naked and wearing stripper shoes <laughs> on stage. That's motivation. But I think that diet to me is the hardest thing. 
um, juggling that with work and babies and, and life, that is hard. And I crave the structure and the discipline. I love it. Um, the presentation and the stage is just like icing on the cake. And once I was done, I was, I was like, I'm doing this again. It was fantastic. Um, and I loved it. Uh, I learned later in life to do it the right way. That was because that was hard. You know, we're all like instant gratification. So I think I trained for eight weeks, like seven months after having Renzo in for eight weeks, which I do not recommend ever. Um, and I dropped the baby weight. That's what I wanted. And I checked something off a bucket list. But I learned years later, um, to your point or question earlier about fitness, not to take shortcuts. Um, cause I suffered after that for several years, you know, mm -hmm. no regrets, but I suffered through a lot of learning lessons with my health. So my adrenals were shot. Um, you remember this, I went through like what, two years, maybe almost three where I battled just not being able to get back to where I was because everything I did created more inflammation, more toxicity. More well, like explain to the people out there yeah. that the two hours a day cardio and living on, on yeah. fish and asparagus, what it does to your body, yeah. you know, because most people out there, they don't understand. They think people want to lose weight. So what do they do? They start running. The one thing that when we are training with Ruben, we're not allowed to do. We're not allowed to run. He doesn't allow us to run because it's not beneficial. It's why you don't see bodybuilders running, right? It's all about low intensity cardio, burning fat, maintaining muscle yeah. and eating properly to keep your metabolism going. So, so many of these people out here that I, that I talk to in the dog training world, they start starving themselves. And they don't understand how harmful that is. And so I try to explain to them in a very simple way. Let's say, just take a random number. If your body burns 2000 calories a day, if you just laid on the couch and did nothing all day, right? You want to be in a little bit of a deficit to start losing weight. So maybe say 1700 calories, 1600 calories. So you're in about a 400 calorie deficit, right? Times seven, that's 2800 calories. It's about 3,500 calories to lose a pound. Now you add a little exercise in there, you're in a bigger deficit. And so people do that and then they start eating less because they plateau. But what happens is the body is very smart. What people don't understand, now your body went from burning 2,000 calories a day without doing nothing. And because you're not feeding it enough and you're overworking it, now, it feels like it has to hold on to everything. So now maybe it's only burning 1,500 calories a day. So now before, if you ate 1,500 calories, you were in a deficit. Now you're at maintenance. And you eat anything more than that, now you're in a surplus. Now, you start, now you're eating less than you were before, but you start gaining weight. And people don't understand how bad they mess up your systems. That's why with me, when you know I'm more visible than, than you and I show it, but when I start getting in shape, people will ask, you doing keto? <laughs> you know, no. When I'm on Ruben's plan and, and I'm not on an official plan right now, that's why you see me eating some of the things I am. Because when I do that, I don't do that to Ruben. I stick to what I'm supposed to eat. You have to understand something, guys. It's hard to eat all the food he makes me eat. I'm eating seven times a day and I'm eating a ton of food to shed the body fat and keep the metabolism going. And so with Stephanie, it was the same thing when let's get to that with Ruben. So the way that happened, let's tell people that. So Ruben so, well, just came online. Right, let me tell me. I'm going to tell a story. Go I'm ahead. Okay. So after all these shows and I went through just, you know, this bout of depression, um, couldn't get rid of the weight. And a lot of women don't know what I'm talking about. When your hormones are really out of whack, you're getting older, you're in your 40s. Um, you have stress at work, stress in your life, environmental stresses, stress, emotional, hormonal stresses. Uh, it's a perfect storm for weight gain. It just is. And then it's a vicious cycle. Like you said, you'll start starving yourself. You try and do extra cardio that doesn't work. And then you start drinking because you're depressed and then that slows down everything. And it's just a vicious cycle. Uh, and then you don't want to work out because you don't feel good and you don't look good. And if you've ever competed, the aftermath like you cannot sustain what you look like on a stage very long there's a reason um for it it's a great discipline it's an art form it's a craft there's a science to looking a certain way but it's not sustainable for very long 
And if you're smart, like with Ruben, um, you slowly but surely start refeeding your body after a competition, stay within a certain healthy weight. And then when you're ready to, you start backtracking, like depleting a little bit more. Um, but if you don't know all those things, you make all the quintessential mistakes. Um, and so in the height of all of this, um, there was a friend who was a competitor and she was with Ruben and she would post all these amazing pictures on Facebook of what she was eating. I was eating tilapia and broccoli and asparagus, which till this day, I cannot eat. <laughs> I just can't. Cans of tuna um, and a lot of egg whites. And I just can't even eat that anymore. And so she wasn't, she was eating like real food and she looked amazing. She had so much muscle on her. She was super lean, she was shredded. And so I messaged her, I'm like, hey, how are you eating all this? I don't understand. And she told me who her coach was. Uh, and we still, we're still good friends and keep in touch this day. And so I looked at this guy and I'm like, all right. I mean, his website looks good. The pictures look good. I don't know from anyone and he's out in California. Okay. And so he's running this contest. And that's why I stumbled upon his his um, Facebook page. And the contest was he was building his platform. He was building his stage. And he's like, hey, if I get to, I can't remember the numbers. So let's say 4,000. 4,000. Okay. You remember. Okay, 4,000 likes. For the 4,000th like, that person's going to win, what, like six months or three months of a just meal his plan. Program. He just said okay, his program. His whole program, yeah. yeah. Including workouts, you name it. So I was like, cool. So I, at the time, worked at a physical therapy and fitness place. So with tons of people. So I'm like, all right, y'all need your help. I need y'all to like this page. And when I tell you to stop, <laughs> then no one else like it because he needs to like it. So what Larry didn't know is I told him I was doing it for me. I was really doing it for him because for many reasons, I knew if he did something like this, like once he commits to something, he's all in. I mean, uh, I've never met anyone like you who's as driven um, and so hyper-focused, you become almost obsessive with your passion. And I knew you'd be that way with this. I just knew it. For now, that was a guinea pig. I kind of wanted to see <laughs> what it would do for you and see if I wanted to use them. And so I don't know how it happened. I mean, it just happened. So I think I was what number three thousand nine hundred ninety nine. It was someone, uh, it was my boss at work. Your boss, right? And he that became number four thousand. And I was like, no. And so I unliked it. Sorry, Ruben. I unliked his page. So you would I, be number four thousand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you won this and. You, the transformation with you it. was, uh, I know and you then, didn't. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it was during hunting season and I like yep. my uncrustables during hunting season. <laughs> and I remember, I, I'll never forget this. I remember sitting in my tree stand and it was the end of week four. I thought that was the whole program. And I remember texting Ruben and saying, hey, Ruben, thanks for everything, man. I feel great. Yeah. This is a great <laughs> yeah. Today's my last day. He texted me back. He goes, hey, dumbass, this is a 12-week program. I was like, no, no, no. But I did go full-blown into it, and I'd never felt better. Like, Yeah. I you just, looked amazing. You were like, you had all this energy. You really, you were like a different person. And immediately, I said, this is my guy. I'm going to sign up with him. And so okay. I did several shows with him. And I will yeah. say the biggest difference um, – Again, you have to kind of steer your mind away from instant gratification. Anything that happens overnight isn't going to last like much longer. And so I had to really pace myself. I'm not a patient person. You aren't either. Um, and that's, that's a, I, I think, a strength, but also a weakness. I had to be patient with myself. I cook. Um, well, you did most of the cooking. But um, I had to be patient with results and understand that something that I'm going to sustain for my health should take a long time. And I remember the best thing about it is the experience was amazing. If anyone's competed, um, it could be the most grueling thing. It could be so rewarding at the end of it, but it's incredibly intense. The yeah. discipline it requires on the diet, the rest, the workouts, drinking water. Like I work with people. I, I know people throughout my work career of 20 years, and they'll still talk about <laughs> the tuna fish smell, the hard boiled egg smell, my yeah. jugs of water, they're like, they thought I was crazy. It requires, and I mean, I, listen, I wasn't competing. And I remember going out to do search warrants, going on yeah. raids and bringing my bring Guatemalan food. chicken stew and stopping yeah. at a gas station because I didn't, I didn't miss, you know, and I tell everyone there was one meal I was supposed to have 12 almonds with. I had 11. I went to the store to buy almonds because I'm not going to eat 11 if I'm told I have to have 12. That's just oh, no. the way I do things. And with, especially the ladies, they have a hard time 
mentally eating as yes. much as you have to to get in the right physical shape and to fix your hormones especially and the time and that i will say uh, the time that i struggle with it and we all do we all struggle male or female but i think women don't talk about it enough when you are in your late 40s i mean i'm going to be 50 when you get to a certain age and you'll know it that day you wake up and <laughs> you start having hot flashes or your skin's different or suddenly you can't lose the weight or you, you just feel different. Um, your hormones are kicking your butt. And I ended up taking, a, like seeking out a functional doctor, taking a Dutch test, which is a urine and saliva test. I did. I gave, tests. I gave you a Dutch oven last night. Anyway. Uh, really? I was awake. I heard, I heard you. <laughs> I'm so mad at you. You're disgusting. I'm kicking you out next time. I really am. You're going to go outside. I mean, like I was sleeping. I heard you going, my God, is that you? Who else is it going to be? It was disgusting. Anyway, and I didn't know if it was a dog. I didn't know. Anyway, <laughs> all right. I'm trying to say something serious. Um, lost some complete train of thought. <laughs> okay, hormones. So um, anytime I put on weight, it's because I'm not eating enough. And that's one of the first things that Ruben does for me. So I still use Ruben. I've had a lot of people ask me that or go to Ruben. Um, I'll use him throughout the year. So I'll use him for maintenance. You know, I'm not competing right now. Um, I use him for maintenance because everyone needs it. I don't care if you're a trainer. I don't care if you know everything. Like everyone needs a coach. Everyone needs a trainer. Everyone Always. needs someone to tell them what to do. And I will say the one thing with Ruben is you never crave anything. I never feel like I want to binge or I crave anything. I actually don't want it because I feel great. But always, if I'm a good seven to 10 pounds heavier, it's always because I'm not eating enough. Uh, so I don't get in enough calories because mine is the opposite. I tend to go all day without eating or I'm like work, work, work. I don't drink enough water. Um, and then I'll, it's, I, I'll overstimulate. You know, it's caffeine in the morning, one at night. Uh, and usually battle with insomnia. So my hormones are all over the place and I battle insomnia so I don't rest. Enough. And most most focus on the working out when in reality, True. exercise True. is not a great way to lose weight and people right. don't understand that. So you could change. This is even something our 11 year old son I'll hear tell people. You can completely change your body with proper nutrition and never working out. Yep. You cannot change your body with working out and eating like shit. I'm prime example. I've never stopped working out my whole life. I live in the gym. I love to work out. But I was recently 267 pounds and fat and unhealthy, still lifting weights and working out all the time. But it doesn't matter because if I'm eating and drinking constantly, it just it doesn't it just it doesn't work. The nutrition yeah. is at least 80 percent of it, you know. Um, so now the business. Why the Zaya? What made you do that? Yeah, we don't need the money. I was looking at chats because I didn't know if anyone asked a question and I can't see him. So. so so financially, we're in good shape. We live a yeah. good life. We're comfortable. We live way beneath our means. We've always been. That was another thing, guys. We grew up in New York and New Jersey where it's spend, 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 right? When we moved down here. A friend of ours gave us uh, Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. Yeah, I remember and that. And that changed everything for us. Yep. Like we immediately changed the way we live thanks to Dave Ramsey. And I did meet him at the Sano's Pizza Bakery one day. Super nice guy. <laughs> Figures, right? I'm going to meet Dave Ramsey and I'm in a pizza place. Super nice guy. But we've had so many blessings moving here. Yeah, like, we really have. And, and, and in, in Arizona, too, getting up and moving around a way is, is just like pretty like we've gotten to see a whole different side of, of living than what we were accustomed to. And yeah. our kids, let's face it, they wouldn't do well where we grew up these days because they have it very, very easy here. But financially, we're in good shape. You have a great career. We both have great careers. What made you start the business thing? Um, another funny story. So every year we do, well, you know this, right? We do our, our vision board every year. You, you're such a, a Scrooge. You don't like holidays. You don't celebrate everything. I'm like life celebrator. That's where we're opposites, but it kind of works because I force all of you guys to celebrate everything. So for new year's, I force everybody, um, to stay up. We do a vision board. We do a thankful drawer. We play board games. I mean, it's, you hate it, right? You just want to poke your eye out. 
Yeah, but I love it. And so the vision board for the whole family is a big deal. Um, and I love it because when you see your kids and even when you're doing it, it's great exercise and you put things down that you want to accomplish, it's pretty awesome. And this was pre-COVID because last year it was kind of funky. Um, I think we all had a hard time putting down stuff on our vision board. But um, so the year before last, I vowed to say yes. I'm someone, I don't know if anyone else feels this way and I, I don't I don't even think you do, Larry, I don't know, but I'm someone, that negative talk is so powerful. Yes, that right? is. Shush. Um, that uh, I just, no, I'm not gonna do this. No, I can't do this. No, I'm too old for that. No, no one cares. Um, I can talk myself, I'm awesome. I can talk myself on anything. So I just said, you know what? I'm gonna start saying yes to stuff. If there's an opportunity, it seems interesting, we'll say yes, we can go for it. Um, so along those lines, one of your clients whom I became friendly with was posting pictures about leggings and she looked cute in it. And I was like, oh, I like your leggings. And she was like, I should send you a pair. I think you like them. And I was like, oh, well, I'll buy them from you. You have to send them to me. And fast forward, um, she sent me a pair of leggings, like does that. And I was tickled pink. I was like, oh my gosh, these, these are amazing leggings. And I posted about it. Um, and so a mutual friend reached out and she's like, you should join. And it was one of the first opportunities. So I was like, okay. Um, and then I got, I looked into it and I was like, this is a no brainer. Let me, let me get this straight. <laughs> so for like $300, I'm not carrying inventory. I don't, I'm not forced to sell if I don't want to, but I can buy into a business. I can have my own business. And I feel like I've always wanted a side hustle. You had one and I put up so much energy into supporting you and doing that for you and for our family. But I always honestly wanted something a little bit just for me. Um, and this was it. I love fashion. I live in workout clothes. Um, I love a great pair of leggings. I don't know what woman doesn't. And um, and they came with pockets <laughs> and it was really great quality. So I said, yes. And I had zero expectations. I thought, I don't- You did it just for a discount for your own clothes, right? Well, yeah, initially, I mean, you'd get a discount. So I was like, cool, I get a discount. I won't pay full price for anything. I could order online. I could try stuff out. It'd be great. Um, zero expectations and then a friend convinced me like just have a party by the way which is terrifying because i figured the people i thought would be supportive like you know my mom <laughs> my sister like people that love me and feel like obligated i knew would support me but it's scary to put yourself out there at least for me it was you make it look so easy but i will tell you to me it was like terrifying because i thought people are going to hate it or they're going to write nasty messages or I don't know, just your mind goes crazy. And I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Um, she convinced me to do like an online party and legit, I think I sold like $2,500 just like that. And I went, oh my gosh, people are actually buying this stuff. And I think I could actually do it. So I still juggled my full-time job, but started to make money doing something I love, which I know doesn't sound crazy to you, but to a lot of people like you, Larry, like who aren't entrepreneurs or, you know, just due to circumstances or a lack of confidence or whatever, um, you know, don't do some, don't pursue a passion um, because they convince themselves maybe they can't or not good enough. It's foreign to think, oh my gosh, I could make money and pursue a passion and something I'm really interested in. And I figured the worst thing that could happen um, is you scratch your own itch right? You get a discount, you get to shop, as you can see the rack behind me, you get to buy all kinds of cute clothes, share it with your friends. And Listen, let's not bullshit people. There's packages that come here every day. I know they're not all for clients. Every day, <laughs> Amazon, UPS, every single day. That's part of the business. <laughs> yeah, that's what she says, part of my business, but you're wearing them. They're, they're you. Yes, How many clothes them. do you need? How many clothes I mean, do you need? Ladies, like how many underwear a pairs of underwear do you need? You know All right, so let me, let me ask you this. You're yes. 50 years old now. Okay, we're gonna celebrate. Okay. I'm re I'm retired. When you're retiring. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. You mean so by retire, you mean like my my traditional job? Like when will I start yes. doing a traditional job? I don't know that. I, I really don't. Maybe five years. Um, but I think something like Zion never. Mm -mm. I no, no, I don't mean from that. That's yeah. something you you like. Yeah. But when yeah. are you going to stop making other people money? When are you going to stop giving all your time to someone that would replace you in a heartbeat? Ouch! I don't know. <laughs> Is that what this call was about? You didn't actually tell me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to say five years. 
Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to start traveling a lot. So if you want to stay home and take care of the dogs, by all means. But take them with you. You, you know, I mean, come on. Hey, Joe, come on now. And listen, guys, you don't understand. All kidding aside, you don't know what this woman's put up with from me throughout the years. Now I'm easy. I think they get it. I think they no, get it. I don't you're think, not easy. You're I don't think easy. they There's do. Do you, remember, do you remember like what a Hold lunatic on, Larry. Yes. Hold on one second. This is really important. So I don't know if you still see my face, but I do see some comments here that are really important. Annette, I absolutely love that. We need to connect. And I'm so sad you're not on my team. My husband should have told you to, but I'll definitely connect with you uh, and help you in any way I can. Um, let's see. There's something else someone said. Oh, yes. Uh, light and tights are everything. Yes, Annette, you're exactly right. We're just, we need a Zion moment. We're going to geek out for one second. Susan says um, hello from Costa Rica. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Um, Yes, and Tyler is going to get blocked because he wants to know when I'm getting rid of the red truck. Yes, Tyler, immediately, immediately. Someone, I need a, a start like a support group. We need to get rid of that. Tina Miller, financial that, peace is day yes. first. Start yep. with financial peace. Yep. Great book. You know, Denise. Denise says there's no client or boss at a full time career that deserves your time more than your family. After the years have passed, you'll never look back and say, I wish I spent more time at the office. Well said. So right. Denise. So right. Well, well said, you know. Come yeah. But, but and, and yeah, we have read that, Gina. We have a lot of books like 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 that. Um, what's your favorite? What's your favorite book right now? My favorite book of all time. No, just uh, like right now. What are you right. reading right now? That you, yeah, right now. Um, right, right now, I'm not reading anything because I'm full blown into Ivan's course and Tobias's gotcha. page right. and Dave Breuer's page. My favorite book of all time is The Richest Man in Babylon. That's why? my. I know you uh, say that a lot, but why is it? I, you know, I love. You know me. I don't read fiction. I only read about something. But for some reason, the way that book is written, I absolutely love it. Um, I love financial peace. I love rich dad, poor dad. You know, the talent code is the first book I've ever read that I couldn't put down. That that's like, I love that book. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was a, a good one. I love Tools of Titans, um, the favorite. audio book. You know, yeah. twenty something hours into it, that there's there's a there's a lot. And 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 honestly, guys, I said you don't understand with this woman. I used to be very different. I was kind of a lunatic when I was young. I really was. And if someone, if a guy would look her at her where we came from, it's a whole different, I would lose my, do you remember the parking lot, the Chinese restaurant? No. Oh my gosh. This is what this woman's put up with me, guys. I used to be a little hot-headed, And if someone looked at her or said something, I was ready to kill somebody, right? So one time we go out at night, we're going to the movies and we stop at a diner and we're eating. She wants to talk to me and she's very sad. She's all upset and she has a serious talk with me. And basically what she said was, I have to stop like going after people because someone's going to kill me or I'm going to kill somebody. And she was really upset. She had tears in her eyes and it broke my heart. I felt so bad. I'm like, okay, I need to calm down a little bit. I swear to God, we leave the diner. And we're going to the movies. We're driving through the parking lot of the movie theater, going straight towards the building. And I look to my left, and here's a car coming slow, but they're not looking forward. They're looking behind them, and the car hits me on the side. Not real hard. She goes, calm down. I said, no, I'm okay. I get out to look at it, and the car takes off. I said, son of a bitch. So I jump in the car and I take off to go after and she's begging me not to. I said, I'm just going to get a license plate, right? Call it in. So I'm thinking, what would I do if I were them? I go around the back of this warehouse and here's the car sitting there. And there's four guys in the car. I don't remember. I And when I got out, she's begging me, please. I said, I'm just going to talk to them. And I really was. That was my intention. I don't remember if I broke the window or ripped the door open, but I grabbed the driver and I pulled him through the door. And the second I pulled him out the window, I just remember a hand coming from the back seat 
with a can of like freaking bear spray and just covering me, just covering me right in my face, point blank range. Mm -hmm. And then they hit reverse and hit me with the car, right? Got hit by the car. I'm sprayed. And for some reason, there was a Chinese restaurant there and the young kids saw everything that happened because I ran in there and I was like ripping chairs apart and going, I couldn't, it was bad. It was, this happened 10 minutes after our talk. That's the kind of shit that we've been through guys. She, so someone says, how does she put up with you? You have no idea the shit she's been, been through, put up. You have no idea. <laughs> so. You're a really good person. I mean, aside from some of the crazy, you're a really right. good person. I don't know. Uh, and I'm just not just saying this. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know a better person. You know, my dad was an amazing man is an amazing man and, and husband. And he set the bar really high for my expectations as a daughter for my spouse. And, that's exactly who you are. You know, I had to kind of pull back a few layers, <laughs> so crazy. Um, but at the core, like you're, you know, you say to, I know a lot of people say it to you. And sometimes when I meet your clients, they're like, you're exactly who, who you appear to be. What you see is what you get. You're exactly that person. You're genuinely one of the best people I've ever met. And you're just a genuinely good person. Um, and it's hard to come by, you know, it, it really, I think when you meet people in the same age, especially with social media, they always put on this facade and you really never know who, who that person is and, and who you're going to get, but you're genuinely that giving and that honest. And um, that's why people enjoy being around you. Um, and you still are a lot of fun and a little crazy. Thanks, Not that babe. crazy. Um, Thanks, but Mama. Yeah. Well, you are. You are. And, There's and no way dad, I'd marry to you if you weren't. <laughs> your, your, dad, your dad is a very good man. He is. Oh, Annette says, oh, my God, you're lucky they didn't pull a piece on you. Annette, there's been right? several times. There's been oh, several right, times, believe me, several times. Yeah, several <laughs> times. <laughs> you have no no idea. Was, New Jersey was was crazy, you know. Do you remember? World. I think today's a whole other world, though. I mean, she's right. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But today. Yeah, I've had some really close calls growing up. Uh, yeah, let's just end it there. But, yeah. I wouldn't talk about too much without drinking bourbon. All right. So a lot of ladies on here, right? They want advice. What would you tell them? You you sit down with a 20-year-old girl just starting her life, doesn't know what she wants to do, right? She's scared. It's a different world. Doesn't know what to do. What do you what do you tell her? Oh gosh. That's um, that's such a loaded question. I think more than anything, when you're that young, I mean, there's that beautiful saying that youth is wasted on the young, right? And hindsight's 2020. So um, if I if I can go back and talk to my 20 year old self, I'll start there. Um, I probably you were just, thicker. You were thicker than shit. I loved it too. <laughs> Shut up. Your 20 year old oh, self. Thick. All right, all right. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I would probably say to literally write down. You know, you have to be in a really clear mindset. So however you get there, whether it's meditation, whether it's a run, a workout, whatever that is, clear your mind um, and write down on a piece of paper, you know, the five things that you want out of life. And it could be when you're 20, you're not thinking of what you're going to be at 50. But I would say at least write down the five things that come to your mind that you want to pursue, put it away. And then I would say a few weeks later, take it back out, look at it and edit it however you'd like um, and then put it away. And then start pursuing a passion, you know, whether it's academic and you're still in college and you're pursuing, you know, something in that in that area or you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to go into fitness, whatever that looks like. Um, I'd say start there, open up that piece of paper and let that kind of be your the start to a journal where you're really honest with yourself. Um, I think that's where I'm going with it when waters get so muddied when you're young and even at any age that you have to be honest with yourself to what I want to do. And it's not till you get much older and re and really, you know, excuse my French, when you give a shit less, you really could like give zero fucks what other people think about you. It's not till you get to your older, but then it's almost like too late because like col our culture, you know, caters to youth. And so um, I think we're changing that. I really do. I think you can do whatever you want. But I think to anyone out there, any age, forget 20 any age, be honest with yourself, ask yourself what it is that you want. And if what you're doing adds value to your life, keep doing it. If it's not and creates more stress, you know, flip the script. Because one day, I mean, you said it earlier, one day, and someone else made a comment 
I think it was Denise, like life passes you by one day. And we tell our kids this, and I tell our kids this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I firmly believe that in this lifetime, whomever you believe in, um, for me, it's God. When you go up there and meet your maker, um, he's going to ask you, did you receive the gifts that I bestowed upon you? And did you use them for good? How did you use them? And you want to be able to say yes, not like, meh, you know, I, I didn't really follow it. I didn't believe myself. Or I didn't feel like doing it. You want to say yes. And you want to teach your kids that and they watch everything you do. So how can I teach my kids, you know, dream big. Yes. Seize opportunities if, if I'm not doing it. So I think whether it's 20 or today, I don't care how old you are, is what you're doing adding true value to your life. And if that means giving to other people, if that means being an entrepreneur, if it means volunteering, whatever that is, and just do it. Cause the worst thing that could happen, you make a mistake and you learn from it. Um, but I think even worse would be regret. Um, and there's, I, don't, I have zero, I, I really do. Cause in, later in my life, maybe because I was sick as a kid, I never got to play sports. And you know this, um, I'm prone to injury, which stinks. And I think what at 20, I started becoming athletic. Wait a second. Um, I forgot yeah. to mention that. Sorry to cut you off. What you have to understand, ladies, is Stephanie can't really work out anywhere as near like she normally could. Like 40% maybe, I would say, yeah. the way you can work out. She, yeah. she tore her disc in her back a few years ago. She can't run. She can't squat. And she's a heavy squat. She likes to work her legs, right? Um, she can't do most of anything. And so she works out rarely these days, once or twice a week in the gym, right? Yeah, that's it. And, and she has to do only what she can do. Yeah. And so it does really come down to diet. Okay. You it's just, it just I forgot to mention that, um, yeah. that breaks my heart for you. Cause I know how much you love it. It kills me when we're in Florida and you see all the people running because oh, that, that was your paradise. Yeah. Even though you'd get lost every time you went out, that was your heaven. Um, <laughs> Kelly has a good question. She says, hi, guys. Good question. My husband was a power lifter when he was younger. Now an over the road truck driver, hard to exercise and eat right in his yeah. truck for a month at a time. Any advice? He has to move, Kelly. There's nothing more deadly than being stationary for hours on end. 10 minute walks. He has to commit to 10 minute walks when he's out on the road. It'll save his life. And he has to pack food with him. Yeah. He I was just going to say that you got to pack your food. Yeah, you got to make your, your stops where you can obviously go to the bathroom, but you got to drink enough. You got to hydrate. Um, I think diets, everything and a little mobility and flexibility is going to go a whole, a whole long way. Cause that's a lot of stress on your heart too. Uh, it just is. That's, yeah. that's a stressful job. What 10 minute walks, Kelly, you'd be amazed what 10 minute walks could do. Look up um, Stan Efferding. Okay. Stan Efferding has some great YouTube stuff. He's a, he, he was the strongest bodybuilder in the world for a long time. And one of the things he preaches is after a meal, 10 minute walks, 10 minute brisk walk, five minute one way, five minute back. If he could pack even a small set of dumbbells, to get a little bit of movement up his upper body, some air squats, a little bit of dumbbells, a 10 minute walk. That's all you need. You don't need much more than that. You know, I, you don't- uh, I'm glad you said that because, um, and Kelly, it's a really good question. So I do get asked that a lot, you know, like what do you do for your abs or how do you stay lean? Um, and there's a part of me that I'm like, if they only knew, I don't do much. Uh, I don't. And I think by not, you know, God has a plan for everything, right? When things happen for a reason. Um, when I tore a disc on my back, would I try seven times to come back? I've had seven MRIs. I'm still in therapy on and off for six years. Um, no surgery, knock on wood, but I'm pretty confident I'm shorter too because <laughs> I have a, a severely desiccated disc. Um, so it's really dried out. Um, so eventually that vertebrae will just create so much irritation that I'm out. Uh, puts me out. So I can't do those things. So I have to eat really well, because even if I don't, uh, that inflammation in my body creates so much inflammation around any injury I have. Um, so biomechanically, I, if anyone's dealt with a back injury, it's so debilitating. It's depressing. It's really, really hard um, just mentally to kind of power through it. Um, and I've had to learn how to work out really smart so I can get on a bike. Um, I can walk. If, you, if you've been a runner, you don't want to walk. I want to punch someone in the face, <laughs> go and walk. It's not relaxing. All I want to do is run and it actually creates more stress. Um, so I've had to really learn mentally to be tough 
um, not to be such a baby and like listen to a book on audio or try and, and meditate actively or do something where I'm kind of clearing my head. Um, Walking is very underrated, guys. Walking is extremely beneficial for yeah, you. It is. Extremely, especially without any insulin in your system. First thing in the morning, empty stomach before you eat anything. You know, 20, 30 minute walk can do wonders for anyone. Get out there in the morning and do it. She's just used to going balls to the wall, but she'll never run again. She re-aggravated on the beach going for a walk a few years ago. I've never seen her in that kind of pain. It was, it was, we couldn't even go home if we wanted to, because she couldn't make the car ride. It was that bad, you know, and, and for the kids to see her like that, it's, it's, it's tough. So you have to take care of yourselves. You know, you can't, um, it scares me because she likes to treat this like an amusement park. And I tell her, oh my gosh. stop the bouncing, stop the bouncing. Okay. I'm not a bouncy gym, not a jumpy house. Take it easy. But she's, she's kind of a wild woman, you know, kind of, I'm just looking to see <laughs> Annette said your video, of you catching oh, me yeah. eating the, the Quix bars on her Zaya page. That's messed up. I can't believe she, she actually, I love it. Annette. I love it. it. I love it. I and if you ever need help, let me know. Happy to um, hop on your VIP page and do reviews, go live. We could do whatever. We have to help each other out. But um, yeah, that's hilarious. Feel free to use it. Um, just so y'all know, Larry is the biggest ball buster. Um, my daughter is so much like him. It's so funny. Um, and we're usually the butt of his jokes. And so whenever there's an opportunity, now that's just when I posted, I don't waste a second to call him out on it. Um, and he is, there's two versions of Larry. There's like the skinny lean guy who's like a reform smoker, the worst, just the worst. He's like obnoxious. He's like shaming everybody on what they're eating and like they're not eating right. They're not working out right, like the worst. And then there's the other guy who's a lot happier. He might be a little more rotund, um, but he's a lot happier. And then somewhere in the middle, he has a cycle. He gets on a plan. Ruben knows this so well. So unless you're on Ruben's plan, which you're a thousand percent dedicated, but if like you're kind of trying to do your own thing in the middle and you're like, yeah, I'm going to lose a little bit. There's a cycle. So first thing, Monday morning, done, on it. You just got a routine. You got a rhythm. Right around Wednesday, if he's doing a live, there comes out some bourbon. But he's like, eh, it's just going to be a glass. By Friday afternoon, he's in the pantry, in the pantry, hiding. And there's wrappers. Like it feels like a giant rat. In the, in the pantry with the door shut. And then by Saturday, he's like, eh, it's the weekend. I'm just going to keep rolling with it. I'm going to go tan a little bit more because, you know, like tan fat looks better. So I'm just going to keep tanning. It um, does. Blue fat looks better than white fat. <laughs> and then all oh, gets better. And then by Sunday morning, loathe. He's self-loathing. I just hate myself. Why did I eat all the Twix bars? Why did you guys let me buy it? On and on and on. And then Monday morning, it starts all over again. So I had to film you so that you could see how euphoric you were, how happy you were, and that's Listen, why you do it. That's the greatest snack I've ever had in my life. They're, they're the greatest things I've ever tasted in my life. Like I could lay in bed naked with a case of those and eat them all day and just be to total euphoria. Uh -huh. um, and there's nothing better. Hey, Mike, Michael Accomando, my Hello. old buddy. Isn't he the most awesome Awesome husband ever. Love you he guys. Is. Thank you, Mike. My old roommate. We had some good times, buddy. We had some really good times. <laughs> Very interesting times that we'll keep private. Um, yeah, but that's the, the, you know, they're so all kidding aside. I could, I just wanted people to get to know you a little better because I think when they see pictures of you in a fitness outfit or on stage or something, you always think, this person is so confident. They have everything going. They have no worries. It just comes easy. And I don't think, especially for young women, it's, I don't think that's a good idea to have in your head. Oh, yeah. Everyone has struggles. And, you know, for me, when I'm dealing with dog people, it's very important for me to connect with them. And when I see someone struggling, and sometimes these are in seminars in front of a lot of people, I have to tap in and okay what's deeper there we all have things in our life and that affects everything it affects yeah. the animals and if you can't get down and figure out what's going on there you can't fix the real issues 
you know? So whether it's dogs, it's fitness, it's the corporate world, it's just work in general, it doesn't matter. Everyone has their issues and it's how you deal with it. When you talked about writing things down, you know, we didn't grow up with money, you know, like we live a completely different life. I know where you're going with this. Yep. And think about how crazy it is all the things we've written yep. down. We've done them all. We've, we've like really done some crazy things because we put it on paper. And at first when you wanted me to do that, I was like, eh, I'm not in, you know, but it, you know, a lot of very successful people swear by little things like that. Manifest destiny. You gotta, yep. You gotta put it out there. I, I couldn't agree more. Jane said something on here about her back and vacuuming. I just want to um, address it really fast. It's the worst. Thank you, Jane, because I don't think my family believes me when I make them vacuum or like I had to, and I didn't feel comfortable and didn't love it. I had to bring someone to my house to help me clean. I love to clean. Um, it's like a stress reliever. It's cathartic for me. Yeah, he'll tell you, like I'm kind of typically a clean freak and I yell at a lot of people when they're messy. Um, so it's actually really hard for me, but I can't vacuum either. So I can't vacuum or like do a whole lot of laundry or like rake leaves or anything insane like that. Um, anytime I've thrown it out, it's, I'd love to tell you it was really a really sexy story. And I was like powerlifting. It wasn't, it was like vacuuming or it was picking up a sock off the floor because my son throws them on the ceiling fan and then they go flying everywhere because um, he thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> it's something like that. Or trying to play, you know, um, trying to play a game with him, trying to play catch, which who doesn't want to do that? And, and it throws out my back. It's so painful. Um, I will say therapy for me was everything. And if you haven't tried it, dry needling for me is everything. Um, I was telling Larry, I'm blessed to work with a really great therapist and I believe in physical therapy a thousand percent. And I like waddled in and I walked upright out and was so much stronger. And um, so dry you needling do. for Cindy. me was everything. Hi, hi Cindy. Cindy. Yeah. Or <laughs> best, best <laughs> She's amazing. Ever. Yeah, but stop vacuuming. <laughs> I'm sorry I got mad and walked out because I didn't want to wear a mask, Cindy. I'm so mad. It was I'm, I'm so sad. I'm so upset. It was a bad morning. I apologize. I um, love intermittent fasting. I think that's a Shelby with Dr. Jason. Yeah. I've listened to him too. Um, yeah, I like I like Jason yeah. Fung too, Shelby. And yeah, I've yeah. done a lot of fasting. I shit two years ago, I dropped thirty pounds in thirty two days. Yeah, doing very little like not changing my workouts. And, you know, if you do it right, the problem is a lot of people fast and then they eat all kinds of shit thinking they can get away with it. And you can't, right. you, right, you, right. you got to break it. Right. The right foods. You still got to eat properly, you know? All right. Look, lovely lady. I, I don't see any, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, we're at a, like an hour and 20 minutes. So I think right. I'll let you get okay. going. And, and do me a favor, just don't go very far. Just slide over to your right. And just uh, prepare yourself, okay? Prepare yourself, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's on now. Anything else you want to say, babe? No, thanks for doing this. I feel so much, this is like another thing I could check off my list. It was terrifying, but after a while, you kind of forget you're doing it, so. Thanks so much, Nikki. That, that, that means the world, that's Coda's mama. Larry and Aww. Stephanie, besides phenomenal training, what you both did for me and my pup, what I kept telling my friends and families, they're amazing, genuine, good people, salt of the earth. Thanks, Nikki. That means the world. We enjoyed you and definitely enjoyed your girl, and I know we'll see you again. I look forward to seeing you in New Hampshire, and I'll actually talk to you this week, Nikki, and uh, you're no different. You're good people. Like, we, you're a very good person, you know. Um, so many people do really nice things for us. Um, yeah. you're one of them, you know, you, 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 you pay us to do the dog stuff and then you get beautiful gifts. I got another beautiful gift today. Another handmade plaque from Cheryl. Beautiful. Mm, Tim, beautiful. your, your plaque off your barn wood. Beautiful. People send beautiful bottles of alcohol. They send cigars. They send all kinds of things. Um, and let me tell you a lot of times, guys, I wake up in the morning Sometimes the night before you see something shitty that someone will say online. And sometimes you just say, I don't need this shit anymore. You know, it's not worth it. It gets to you every now and then. And then you wake up and you see some of the emails I get and the text messages and you guys send gifts or just say, you don't understand how you keep me going by doing that stuff. You have no idea how meaningful it is. So don't think it's uh, not appreciated because it, it really is. 
Um, Cause sometimes I'm a miserable son of a bitch and they don't, my wife and kids don't know why they just think I'm angry. But sometimes some of the shit you see online gets to you. Like there's some really nasty people out there. You know what I mean? And I could deal with criticism, but I don't like liars. I don't like when people make shit up and try to twist things or edit things. You know what I mean? That I have no tolerance for. So that could really, really get you in a, in a really disgusting mood. But then someone will always send something to say, wow, that was well worth it. You know? Um, yes, Chrissy, it's definitely sexy time. Um, I got my Dr. Squatch soap and deodorant. If you guys ever seen the infomercials on Facebook for Dr. Squatch, they they can't resist you. And I'm going to go take a shower with that right now. Oh my now. gosh. Oh my and gosh. All- listen, listen, you know, it's sexy. Take out the garbage, put away your laundry. I don't know why there's socks everywhere and your shoes are everywhere. That is sexy. Go vacuum. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it naked. Ren's out. Go upstairs. I got to talk to your mom <laughs> privately. <laughs> he said, <"Why?" laughs> he said <"Why?" laughs> Love you, buddy. All right, babe. Hey, guys. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, and thanks for the support. I just wanted you to get you to know my wife a little bit better because you, you know her a little bit, but just because I joke around a lot. But, you know, uh, She's the biggest part of why I do what I do because without her, I'm not doing it. Believe me when I tell you, she's, she's pushed me to do everything I've ever done in my life. Everything. Believe me when I tell you. So if it, if it wasn't for her, you know, none, none of this exists. It, It really doesn't. You know what I mean? So thank you all for the continued support. Um, Stephanie, don't ignore people's friend requests. She gets a lot of friend requests yeah. through dog people, and she never knows who to click on because there's a lot of weirdos out there. You know what I mean? Yes. And and, yeah. and so if, if she's not big on Facebook, I'm trying to tell her you have to be on Facebook more. You can't just do Instagram. And your Zaya shit, you can't just post pictures of models and average. No one sees that shit. They want to see you. They want to see more of you okay, okay, than okay. a normal person. Okay, they want to see you now. Take your shirt off now. Take it off. Take it off. <laughs> okay, okay, this is derailing fast. <laughs> okay, love you, babe. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you all Bye. soon. Okay, I'll see you over there in a minute. Don't move. <laughs> Bye.